And welcome to Houston Newsmakers Extra. I am really pleased to have Leslie Visser here. You know her, you've seen her for many years. I'm an old guy. <laughs> So <laughs> well, I, I've here seen we you are. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. You too, Campbell. You have done so much. Your career and you have a new book out. Uh, Sometimes you have to cross when it says don't walk. Why the title of that book? Oh, thanks for asking. When um, my family moved around a lot when I was little, which was great if you love sports, but lousy for a marriage. <laughs> but we lived in Cincinnati and I was about nine or ten years old and this was in the 60s mm -hmm. and you know at that time most women were one of three things you were a nurse a teacher or a homemaker and my mother said to me she was a teacher and she said what would you like to be and I said you know what I'd like to be a sports writer which totally took her back it was like somebody going to the moon right so she instead of like um, this completely um, dissolving her, she said, great, sometimes you have to cross when it says don't walk. And you've done that throughout your whole life, haven't I you? I have. I've, I've always been the first, and um, it really gave me permission, which is the reason I wrote the book is, I mean, if you love sports, which you do, you're, you're going to love it because it's all anecdotes, mm -hmm. but it's really for anybody who had a dream, mm -hmm. you know? Some kids want to be a poet or a musician, and and I'm sort of the example that you can do it. We see women now all the time on the sidelines doing coverage and so forth. You were the first. So what was that like as you were doing that the first time, not knowing what to expect, but how to go ahead and set the example for what would be going coming later? Well, I did want to represent myself. I wanted to represent CBS. Um, I wanted to handle myself professionally. And I watched a lot of film, first with the Patriots, the mm -hmm. team I covered as a beat. And then I took John Madden's bus with him for, a, can you imagine, for some, like six years. And he would go over, remember the Redskins, the old counter tray? Yes. He would go over that thing on the film until I could <laughs> diagram it. And he'd say, no, I told you, the guard pulls this way. <laughs> but I, uh, I, now, I, I, I used to tell as a joke, but did you see the movie Hidden Figures? Yes. Well, remember, it was such a great movie. Remember when Kevin Costner says to her, where do you go every day? Sure. And she said, I go to the ladies' room. And I used to tell a joke about how when I started, there were no ladies' rooms because, of course, there were no other women. Right. But um, she was so proud in the way she said, it takes me 40 minutes to get over to the colored ladies' room and back. Sure. Well, I used to go down the press box, cross the field, go to the one public women's room, wait in line, and hope that I would get back before the team punted. So um, I identified with it, you know, and I, I realize now that that's not a joke anymore. Uh, people take it for granted now that and, everyone can have a restroom. And we've evolved in so many different ways now. Women are being much more elevated, and as they should, and to, to equality levels. When you look at what's going on now with the Me Too movement is going on now as well, what do you look at in terms of how much more you would like to see women be elevated toward a level of equality? Because it's not there yet. No, but we're in that market correction, finally. You know, we're in where, now I've still never had a woman boss. Uh, I owe my career uh, to four men, and none of those four men ever sexually harassed me. I know you're NBC, but Les Moonves from CBS is one of the people I owe my career to, the great Sean McManus from uh, CBS and uh, Boston Globe in my early years at CBS. So I was never, I never had an assignment or an economic challenge or an inequity, but um, my heart breaks for those women. What do you tell them as a source of inspiration and determination for them to push forward for those women who are dealing with that kind of challenge and how they can get through that? Well, you know what worked for me is uh, I used to say, well, because players would hit on me all the time, and, and, and I would say to them, now your mother didn't tell you to talk like that. <laughs> so being from Boston, humor's our defensive mechanism, and that's our like default position. So I would just try humor, and that usually worked. You know, it, it, uh, you know and certainly they were on to the next woman, so yeah. it, it didn't. But I do think we are now in a time that we'll look back on it and say, gosh, remember around 2018, there were many, many corrections in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. 2006 was a big year for you, Hall of Fame. Uh, people would maybe not know that you're 
a woman in the Football Hall of Fame. What was your thought when you, that was happening? I, obviously, it was a long process, but what was your thought when that was happening, and how do you look up upon that as a badge of honor today? Oh, uh, well, nobody aspires to it, you know? You, you don't, you just, you go about your job, and your legacy builds, or your body of work builds, and I remember when I got the call from Canton, and I, I, I thought they had the wrong number. <laughs> I couldn't believe it was it was stunning to me that uh, I went in with greats Troy Aikman the late great Reggie White Harry Carson it was a great class and I was really shocked and I hoped it meant that many more women could think uh, boy whatever it is in sports I want to do or whatever it is at all if I want to if I want to go to law school maybe I could be Sandra Day O'Connor right, right? right. if I want to try to get in a NASA program, maybe I could be Sally Ride. So I really hope the book stands for, I don't care if you're black or white or Hispanic or gay or straight, it's, it's just if you have a dream. This is uh, beautiful because it has you with the Lombardi Trophy. It is. Which is appropriate in that we're getting ready to have the Super Bowl coming up in a week, and the team that you covered for many years is once again there. Shouldn't they just have a permanent Lombardi <laughs> Trophy for the Patriots? Well, it is death taxes and Tom Brady, let's face it. <laughs> <laughs> is that the way they, they talk about it in the uh, Northeast? Uh, we, that's sort of how we, we think of Tom Brady. But I was the only woman ever to present the Lombardi Trophy, and it was in Minneapolis. So it's kind of um, come full circle. So Are they going to win it again this year, you think? It's awful hard when you think poor Nick Foles. I think he's been in, what, two playoff games, and this is Brady's eighth right. Super Bowl. Right. So it's kind of, I think it's ironic um, that Danny Amendola had only caught two passes all year, and then he caught two in like 20 seconds. Right. You just, right. Didn't you just feel the Patriots are going to come back somehow? And I feel the Patriots are probably going to be just fine in <laughs> Minneapolis as well. Well, I'll tell you about the party. Okay. <laughs> 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 Leslie Visser, sometimes you have to cross when it says don't walk, a memoir of breaking barriers. You've broken them all your life. Thank you for being the example that you've been for so many people, including myself, who once upon a time was in the sportscasters rank. For yeah, sure. Years. We miss you in Miami. Okay. Thank you, Canberra. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Good much. To see you Good again. to see you too.